guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. This reading vlog I'm so excited about because I'm going to be finally reading one of the most popular fantasy series I have not started yet and I'm so excited to document the process with y'all today. But before I jump into the TBR itself, I did want to quickly shout that this video is sponsored by Cricut and I'll be showing off a really fun fall inspired craft later on in this video. Let's go ahead and chat about the two books I want to read for this vlog. So first and foremost, I want to read Malice by John Gwen. I'm finally picking this book up. I'm finally checking it out for myself. I've read John Gwen before, but I have not read his most famous and well-known series. This is a multi-POV tale set in a landscape um, that is kind of like destroyed-esque. Like essentially there was a conflict between humans and giants thousands of years prior and it kind of like raised the earth. So humanity has survived um, but communities and kingdoms are kind of a shadow of what they once were and that's kind of the landscape in which the story takes place. We follow a variety of characters and I believe like the threat of giants and this conflict is kind of rearing its head once again. I hear this is really intense, very political, full of lots of characters, and I'm excited to find out for myself. However, though, I'm also going to be reading two books at once at the same time, because while I'm craving like intense high fantasy with lots of action, I'm also craving fantasy romance. So I've decided to turn back to Iona Andrews and the Hidden Legacy series. It's a very popular urban fantasy series where I've read the first book. Um, so I'm on the second book, White Hot, and I'm sure you can tell by this incredible cover it's gonna be a vibe. This is set in a world where magic users exist and we follow our main character Nevada who has magic and she's kind of like an investigator if you will. Um, she stumbles across this really difficult case and she also gets involved with an individual who is really annoying but very hot and that's kind of like where the story starts. I've heard such good things about this series. I enjoyed the first book conceptually. I liked the world and the romance was honestly fun but I hear it grows and gets like better and better and her universe has like a lot of books in it so I just want to get further along and I'm just craving romance, like fun, will they, won't they, angst, steam, like all of that, while also I'm also craving a book like Malice. So I think this will be a fun combination of things for this vlog. I'm really excited to document the process because both of these series are very beloved and I just, I don't know, I'm in the mood for both of them and I'm just excited to read all of the pages. So anyway, welcome to the start of the vlog. Let's have a good time together. I truly cannot wait. Um, and uh, let's just get reading right now. Lunch and a little Real Housewives of Salt Lake City break. <laughs> I've decided to do some afternoon reading and I'm also gonna get myself an afternoon coffee. I'm just, honestly, I'm not even gonna say it's forbidden anymore because I've clearly fallen off the wagon and maybe I'll get my life together after fall, winter, but I feel like I just need it. You know, it's a busy time, coffee's delicious. So I'm gonna heat this up. Hope I don't have an existential crisis and start malice. Hi guys, we are about to sit down and do an ultra fun fall craft together with Cricut. And this video is again, sponsored by Cricut. Cricut is truly one of the great loves of my life. I love working with them. I love using my Cricut on a regular basis. I have made so many fantastic things with my Cricut over the years from bookmarks to literal name tags at my actual wedding. I flew with the name tags I handmade, handmade with my Cricut to Italy and it's turned into a keepsake I will have for the rest of my life. If you're not familiar, Cricut is essentially a line of machines and products basically take all the guesswork and confusion out of DIY. I used to be so intimidated by crafting or just trying to do artistic things for myself. But Cricut makes everything so simple from all of their products and the machines working together to their design space. It just makes the entire process seamless. So you can think more about what you want to make versus agonizing over how you're going to make it. You know what I mean? But today's craft is very seasonally inspired because I'm going to be putting together a menu for my upcoming fall dinner party. I have gotten really into hosting dinner parties. I did one over the summer and it was a blast and so obviously I had to do one for my favorite season which is fall and I wanted to take it up an extra notch by making my own menu to set the table with because I just think it's so cool. Like I see it online I wanted to do it myself so that's what we're doing today. So here is the menu I made in Cricut Design Space which is again a true game changer. A combination of cutting and writing. I love my Cricut because it makes my handwriting look amazing because obviously I'm not actually the one doing the writing, but here it is. Here are my steps. 
Here are my materials. I'm gonna do orange paper. My markers are stunning and I'm gonna do gold vinyl decals. Let's get started. So step one, after you make your design, which I'll have my design linked down below, you select how you're going to input your materials. I opted to do this orange cardstock for my menus and then I have a typical black pen and then this really pretty color called Very Berry for my writing. So let's get started. All right, my first round of materials are loaded and now all I have to do is press go. Loaded in my second color, but look how good that looks so far. Alrighty, loading up material number two and pressing go. Laying down this permanent vinyl is so fun because it's just basically stickers. <laughs> And here is the final menu. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'm also so excited to make some of this food, particularly the one pot chicken with caramelized lemons and dates. I mean, doesn't that sound delicious? Thanks again to Cricut for sponsoring this video. I'm so excited to host my upcoming fall dinner party, especially with my new fancy menus to be able to show my friends. I will of course have everything I used in this craft link down below, as well as some of my favorite Cricut bundles. Thank you again to Cricut for sponsoring this video, but let's go ahead and dive back into the vlog. Hi friends, I'm happy to report I have made some headway on Malice. I have read 75 pages and so far so good. This is the first book to a series, a rather long series, so I'm heavily in just the exposition phase and kind of just trying to get a handle on the POV characters, which there are many, the locations, the structure of this world. But here's the deal. I actually love a slow exposition. I love a slow beginning because I feel like ultimately it always pays off. The more time I can spend with my characters and their usual general situation, getting to know them, their point of view, who they love, who they care about, I just so much more quickly care about them like later on and I feel like the stakes just pay off more. So John Gwen can take all the time he needs because one, I find his writing style engaging and just learning about this world to be interesting. Um, so I don't even mind that either. But who have we been introduced to so far? So as I said, this is set in a world where thousands of years ago there was this huge war between giants and humans and also there is some type of nod to the gods and like power granted by the gods there's like the god of creation and then there's like the god of chaos and the god of chaos was the one who stirred up this war and the god of creation got really pissed that everyone was fighting and then too late he realized it was because the god of chaos created the whole situation to begin with lots of drama lots of lore lots of folklore backstory you know with that in mind though the setting of humans living post the height of a civilization is always one I'm really interested in. I love the exploration of ruins. I love the rediscovery of like magic and lost history. And obviously like the spark of moving forward in society too. Like generally that sort of happens. And I, I just think like living amongst ruins of the past is just an interesting one. And I feel like that is like a huge part of this book. Also starting to read some of the characters they are a lot younger than I was anticipating. Um, and I'm curious if there's going to be like time, like a large swath of time that's going to pass in the series, or if they're just going to continue to be young, which is also fine. But I just was surprised by that in general. So first we have Corbain. Corbin? Corbain? I'm gonna say Corbain. That sounds more fantasy vibes. Um, and he's like 14. And he lives in this like small village town. His father's a blacksmith and he has dreams of becoming a warrior underneath his king's rule. And this land seems to be comprised of like small kingdoms. And then there's like a high king um, that kind of like rules them all, if you will. But the land is like scattered. There's not like a whole bunch of humans that live and like there's kind of just these isolated pockets of cities and civilization, but again, they're very small. So that is our first character, Corbain. And then we have Evnis, who is like the advisor to King Brennan, the same king that Corbain wants to like fight under. But he made basically like a deal with some dark powers, like way before the start of this book. And at the beginning of the book, he's starting to be like told to start putting some things into motion, um, which is interesting and spooky. And his character, is an interesting one because he's not like straight up bad guy like he's a bad guy but I feel like he's gonna be more dynamic than that and then we have Veritas who is the no newest member of a war band underneath a prince and this is the prince of the high king which is an important distinction so he is in a different location than Corbain in Evnus and then we also follow Nathair who is the prince that prince of the high king and he has like his own ideas of how politically he feels like things should move forward and he's kind of getting wrapped up into politics which we sort of see hinting at the beginning but again a large part of what i've read so far is just introducing us to this world and these characters and then i'm sure we'll follow them and how they move within it um most of the characters are very young which is interesting 
and I feel like things are going to get complicated very fast, but I read the first 75 pages pretty quickly. I did have to like closely pay attention because there was a lot of information being thrown at me, but I like the writing style. I like the structure and I have a feeling I'm going to get sucked into this a lot. A little relaxing before dinner. We got the faux fireplace on and we are starting White Hot by Ilona Andrews. Hello. I've started dinner and it's another soup night because any feeling of fall I have, I immediately just start making soups. And tonight I'm making a really easy, oh, my phone. Tonight I'm making a really easy, like tortellini Toscana soup, um, which I'm really excited about. It should be super tasty. And, uh, and we'll be able to eat it for the next couple of days, which is always a win. I'll have this recipe link down below because it is not my recipe so there's that so i'm gonna let this cook i also read like 20 percent of uh white hot i read it so fast it's exactly what i feel like reading that and malice i think this is gonna be a a good page count vlog a good page count vlog for sure and dinner is served tortellini soup is done i also made some toast you know the dippy 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 and we're gonna watch some jersey shore gonna watch some TV and play some Fay Farm. And then I'm gonna read more of White Hot. I'm so into this book. I feel like I'm gonna read this in 24 hours and then pivot back to Malice, which I'm also on page 120 of Malice. I have, I need to update y'all on what I've read, but first I have to play some Fay Farm. I've got some things I need to do. <laughs> then updating and then more reading. Hi, I'm about to sit down and do some more reading of White Hot um, by I Iona. Alona Andrews and here's the deal I really like this urban fantasy series I think looking at the covers I think you might you know assume that it's only romance which there is a heavy romance component but the actual plot is rather engaging and I also really like the main character so let's let's talk about the setup of this book an urban fantasy series set in our world is actually set in Houston Texas shout out. And in this world, magic exists, but there's levels of magical abilities. And a lot of magic is also like genetic and tied therefore to like houses. So the more powerful you are within this family, within the house, you have a higher standing within the family. The highest standing in this world is called the prime. And they're the most powerful magical users in like all of the land. Um, and again, they're kind of like the top of their house. Magic is power, it's money, it's influence, it's everything. The better magic you have, the more influence you have in society at a government level, at an everyday standard citizen level, these types of things. Nevada, our main character, has magic um, and she helps run her family's like detective agency. They take on small jobs, kind of lower stakes, investigative moments, uh, like cheating husbands and stuff. But at the beginning of book one, they're basically roped into this very high profile, very dangerous case because the holding company basically owns their small agency and they're kind of like blackmailing them to do this. So our main character, Nevada, is forced to do it because she wants to, you know, protect her family. And here's the deal. I really like Nevada as a main character. She's really spunky. She's not annoying, um, which I feel like can be <laughs> difficult with sometimes romance series. She doesn't have like the same one-liners. Like she's a compelling main character to read from, at least I think. And there is a huge investigative element to this. It's book over book, so every book so far kind of has a new case, but it is tied to like a larger question of people who are powerful trying to take advantage of people who are less powerful sort of thing. But anyway, Nevada takes on this case and then she runs into this character called Mad Rogan, who's so alpha and definitely the love interest. He's probably like my least favorite part of this book. He's not my stereotypical like favorite male lead in a book but he's like good enough and the back and forth between these two main characters is fun and again i just like nevada so much that i'll like look past the alpha that is matt rogan his name is also ridiculous but anyway he's a prime he also has a reputation um he's also like anti-establishment sort of thing so they tend to work together a lot to solve cases and that sort of stuff. So book one happened, there's this big case, blah, blah, blah. Book two, Nevada's trying to stay away from Mad Rogan, put some distance, she doesn't wanna deal with this crap, love her. And she gets hired on to do this new case, which again is tied to the same power structures that we've been introduced to in terms of like prime families, powerful magical families. Um, but this time it's a case revolving trying to figure out how a man's wife died and he's like 
loves his wife more than anything and he like wants to find revenge and he needs to get the answers and so Nevada decides to take on this dangerous case to do that but like it's interesting and it's even better so far than I think the first one I just really like the investigative structure of this book I think the concept of the magic and how it works within this world is really cool like the different levels of power within the magic and there's also different types of magic users for example our main character is a truth seeker so she can tell when people are lying versus um mad rogan <laughs> is like telekinetic sort of so like different powers and stuff i'm kind of rambling but it has a good balance of like an actually coherent plot good character writing good dialogue good banter and like a decent enough romance for me to be thoroughly entertained, you know? And that's how I feel. And I'm really excited to read her other books. This series is a lot of fun and I'm curious if any of y'all have read it because I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. Also, I have this habit when I read romance books where I just read over descriptions of like outfits because it'll just immediately give me the ick. Like I accidentally just read a description of an outfit in this and I went, what? <laughs> literally, would never i would never outfit change in my mind like ken kendall new outfit anyway okay i'm gonna go back to reading guys oh you're crooked i read 400 pages yesterday how did this happen how did this happen 24 hours 400 pages read let's get you up to speed so first and foremost malice malice i read 120 pages of this book and i'm really liking it again i'm still very much in the exposition in the intro it's very slowly pace and it definitely does take a second to kind of wrap your head around the characters kind of what they're referring to because i would say john Gwen kind of just throws you in and you kind of have to parse together the politics and structurally how everything works i like that i feel like it keeps me really engaged especially in the beginning and kind of forces me to not only pay attention but like kind of piece the larger picture together myself which is kind of like a fun task alongside maybe like a slower paced part of the story but you also get the sense while not a lot is happening now things are going to pick up it's like the beginning wheels are like creaking and the momentum is only going to make things go faster um and this human giant conflict is going to pick up the pace it's been intense and emotional already so i have a feeling this book is going to be incredibly brutal but i have plans to read much more of this today the other amount of pages are all from white hot i read over 300 pages of this book in a 24 hour period i couldn't put it down this is such a fun urban fantasy story and just like romanticy needs to take a page out of like classic urban fantasy books because it has the romantic pacing you love in a story like the will they won't they the, the tension all the anticipation everything is drawn out in such a delicious and anticipatory way but alongside that the plot is super compelling like in large part why i've been able to put this down outside of the relationship dynamics i really love the main character nevada as i said she's this sort of investigator and i'm really loving like the central mystery or client of this book and the conspiracy is really starting to balloon and it is connected to book one and I just feel like all of the inputs are like by no means the most mind-boggling book I've ever read but it makes it so entertaining and compulsive to read obviously I read 300 pages like it just kind of sucked me in and uh, I need to know how it's going to all wrap up and I have a feeling I'm gonna finish this book today I only have like 30% of it left I think it's around 400 plus pages it's not a short book but I read it fast and it's just again just the combination if you love romanticy I feel like more people need to be reading some classic urban fantasy. It might drive you crazy if you don't like long drawn out will they won't they but that's like my favorite part of romance in these types of series. So I love when authors like make me wait for it. <laughs> you know, so that's how I feel about that. But yeah, I've read over 400 pages. Hey, hey. And uh, I know I've read mostly White Hot, but don't worry, I am going to read hopefully all of this book, this vlog too, but I'll probably finish this first just because it's kind of taken over my life. But I'm really enjoying Malice as well. So it's a win-win. 400 pages, y'all. Also, I'm wearing a t Canadian tuxedo today. Do Canadians call Canadian tuxedos tuxedos or do they just say tuxedo? Anyway, that's my question of the day. It's lunchtime, and the beautiful thing about making a lot of soup is that it's available to reheat for lunch the next day. Isn't that beautiful? And lunch is served. I finished it. I finished White Hot, so now I can definitely focus all my attention on Malice. I apologize for that deviation. I My plan was to read them both at the same time. 
may definitely finish Malice, maybe get like 50% through this, but I ended up reading the entire thing in 24 hours because I just got really addicted to it. Honestly, plot progression, A+. Plus. The evolution of the powers, the reveals, the training, the political concepts of this, it was like so entertaining. It, it gives me the same thrill I felt like when I got really addicted to Vampire Diaries. You know, like all the drama on the reels, you're just like, what? And then you just have to keep reading. It's, it's that kind of propulsion for me. This cover is so bad. Look at it. Look at it. It's awful. But, you know, sometimes it's just that's just be how it is. But anyway, I had a good time. But I'm pivoting over to Malice now. And no one can stop me. Not even me. <laughs> so that's the plan. And that's what we're doing. But I just wanted to let you know I have read over 500 pages. <laughs> for this vlog 520 to be exact not bad not bad folks and we'll be reading more tonight it was clay's turn to pick what we watched tonight and he picked us re-watching the texas v alabama game so that's what i'm doing matilda's here too but i will be reading malice soon all right everyone faux fireplace is on and we are shifting back to malice and i am so excited about it this is my number one priority now because i quite literally finished the other book for this vlog but i'm also just excited to read this and share more in-depth thoughts and feelings so let's get back to it good morning guess who stayed up past midnight reading again last night i can't keep doing this i'm smelling coffee everywhere why am i so heat? anyway the point is guys ignore this mess why do i keep staying up so late that's the real question. Actually, I know why. Hi friends, good morning. I wanted to film a reading update because I've passed the 200 page mark of Malice by John Gwen and I'm liking this book. So far, I wouldn't say it's like completely 100% captured my attention. I'm totally obsessed, 1000% invested in all the characters and the storylines, but I'm intrigued and so far I'm pretty entertained. Writing style wise, I would say this book might not be for everyone. It's written in a very traditional fantasy way. It's kind of removed, kind of stoic. I'm enjoying how John Gwen is going about it. I would say his other series, um, has a little bit more of a straightforward writing style that I feel like is maybe a little more appealing more broadly. But I think because this has like very traditional kingdoms, fighting, conflict, good versus evil, like it kind of works with the overall vibe of the story. It kind of reminds me of the writing style of Robert Jordan, if you were curious, but I'm finding this more engaging than The Wheel of Time, which I do want to shout out. Um, but yeah, so 200 pages, still very much in the initial setup and feeling. I really like that we are shifting from so many different perspectives, and I like how it allows us to move to various places geographically. Um, but it's hard to really update y'all outside of just like, I like the characters, I like the world, I like the setting because we're still so early days in this and there's so much more to experience and I'm just kind of along for the, the ride. But I'm trying to speed through my work so I can sit down and read a lot more. We're gonna have a rainy couple of days, which this book is perfect for a rainy day. It just really brings me back. I think it's the writing style. So I just wanna curl up and read this book. So I have to be ultra productive. I woke up extra early. I woke up at like, I'm a morning person. So um, I work, I wake up as early as possible and start working as early as possible so I can finish work as early as possible. And that was definitely my plan today. So I could sit and read this as much as possible later on. Um, but yeah, that's where we are. That's where we're at. Looking forward to it. And uh, I need to go get dressed and do a variety of things. But I'm on page 200, which also means I've read 600 pages for this vlog. Guys, it's so gloomy outside. It's stunning. I have a literal sweater on, even though it's not sweater weather, but I, you can trick yourself if it's sweater weather, especially when the sun is hiding. I finished up my work for today. So I'm brewing a fresh pot of coffee. Um, which again, I'm not commenting on <laughs> and I'm going to sit down now and read more Malice, which I'm so excited about. I'm going to get super cozy. Hopefully Millie will join me. TBD. She's, you know, by her window and uh, we're going to get some serious pages in right now. Hello. It's raining. Peak cozy vibes. So I am this far in Malice, like 230 pages. Not bad. I'm liking this book, but I'm also feel like I'm on the edge of my seat for the for the stuff to start happening. Um, so keep that in mind. It's definitely a slower start, but I feel like it's going to be worth it. I'm not bored by any means, but I'm also just kind of like, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
especially because I feel like right now every character for the most part is being presented as a good person um, but we are given a prophecy and I'm pretty sure some of these good people are actually going to be bad people which I think it'll be an interesting like transformation like the slippery slope come to life Obviously, I'm just forecasting here. I don't know if that's going to be the case at all, but I hope it is because otherwise everyone feels a little on the nose. But I'm not sure. I'm just going to see how things progress. I think my favorite character so far is Corbain. He's just really cute. He's like this like 14 year old kid. I love seeing him. I don't know, interact with people in his community. He's a hard worker. He's sweet. He's kind. I like his sister. I like Brianna, the healer in town. I like that he has a little cub companion. I like Corbain and I think I'm supposed to like Corbain. So that is good, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm trying to read as much as I can right now because my friend Emily is actually coming over. We're gonna make dinner together and watch your name because she's never seen it before and I feel like I need to I don't know, show her that experience because that movie is fantastic. So that's the plan. So more reading. I'm gonna try to get to page like 260 and then do some picking up and such. And then uh, we'll obviously read more tonight before bed and then tomorrow and we'll keep this uh, reading train going. Look at that progress. Sweet, sweet progress, Millie. But now it's time to go start dinner. Get ready for Emily to come. We're gonna watch a movie and then I will read more this book later it's starting to really like this simmering tension is really starting to simmer you feel me dinner is prepared emily is here and we're gonna start in your name soon uh oh and we're drinking out of the pumpkin glasses don't ask me how many times i've watched your name and then also cried watching your name the answer is too many times but now it's late, I won't lie, but I am gonna try to get a bit more reading before I ultimately fall asleep. It was so fun to hang out with my friend, Emily, and watch obviously a fantastic movie, cook a tasty dinner. It was a solid night in, if I do say so myself. But now, again, reading, sleeping, and then tomorrow, it's off to the races with Malice. Hello everyone, good morning. I have a reading update. All week, I've been staying up way too late reading both this book and the other book of this vlog. <sighs> so pray for me today. But I have passed the 400 page mark of Malice and things are really starting to pick up. Um, I will say so far a lot of the plot elements I maybe have guessed a little bit. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing though because at this point it's relying on some very classic tropes. Um, oh my god my succulents are submerged. <laughs> Sorry it rained last night and I just noticed. Um, and what I mean by that is like there's chosen one trope. There's just a lot of classic fantasy stuff happening. There's a prophecy. Uh, there's definitely the beginning of what's going to be this very intense event as the players begin to reveal themselves within this prophecy. Um, and I think my comparison to Robert Jordan, The Wheel of Time persists. Again, they're not the same, but I think stylistically they are reminiscent of each other both in the writing style and the story structure though i do find john gwen's version of it to be more compelling and easier to read um so do keep that in mind one thing i will say about malice is there are so many characters and there is not like a character glossary in my version at least and there needs to be because <laughs> there are so many and sometimes i'm just like who is that i just need like a quick reminder like shield person to princess of Arden, but there's, I mean, there's probably 40, 50 characters I've run into. And for the most part, I can track it, but I would not have been mad if there was a character glossary in this, but 400 pages in, things are starting to pick up. John Quinn has spent a lot of time kind of establishing this world um, pre what is about to happen, which I think is going to be effective, especially as things begin to happen. I feel like having all of this set up will make things more intense, will make the plot developing and spiraling more satisfying and captivating and all of that. So I always appreciate when authors take their time in that way. I will say um, the sort of light and dark parallel, the diverging of paths that he's using within his characters, I did see coming, but that doesn't mean I don't like it. And maybe you're supposed to see it coming, but it's still very interesting and it still gives you a lot of anxiety and like intensity. Um, and I, I like 
where we're going with this, especially this sort of good versus evil, huge conflict that could like destroy the world sort of thing. Again, it's a setup we're familiar with. I mean, Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time. I mean, it's something used frequently, but John Gwen is kind of putting his own spin on it and it makes it pretty engaging. But yeah, I wish I had a character glossary, but I feel like I'm gonna really fly through the last 30% uh, of this book I feel like I have about left. Um, Unfortunately, I do have a lot of stuff I need to do today. So I gotta do that first and then I'll read more Malice. But 400 pages in, that is my reading update. Are y'all ready for this? It's too much. It's too much. Lunch is served, a quick lunch, because I truthfully lost track of time. So. This is what this is where we're at today. Can I tell y'all the high today is 85 degrees. <gasps> I'm so excited. So is Millie. I put on a sweater vest, even though sweater vests aren't for 85 degree weather, but it's called delusion, friends. Honestly, it feels like so mild to me. I think when your body is just in 106 degree heat all the time, it, when it's 85, you're like, wow, this is nice. That's how I feel. So anyway, I'm gonna sit down and read some malice right now. Millie is at her window, keeping watch, working very hard. A new outfit in a new day, but let's ignore that and move on because I have a reading update and I'm definitely on track to spend most of my day today reading and finishing Malice for myself, for you guys, for this vlog. So honestly, it's been hard to give thoughts and feelings about this book up until the point where I'm at because John Gwynn is taking his time. And I don't think this is a bad thing, but it does just make talking about the book a little bit difficult because transparently stuff is happening. Um, but why stuff is happening, feelings about what is happening, it all feels one kind of murky, but it's just very slow going because I can just tell Malice is about setting up the board. Malice is about introducing us to this world, to some characters. Things are gonna go wild later on in the series, but to understand how wild things are gonna get, we need to have a baseline understanding of how did the world work first? How did our characters interact with each other in the beginning? How did our characters' lives function before everything changed one day? And John Gwen is really giving us a lot of time and a lot of space to engage and interact with all of these things across a variety of characters and locations before I know inevitably he's gonna mess everything up, you know? But I do feel like we're reaching a point where things are beginning to turn. So I feel like I can kind of wrap up my thoughts and feelings about the exposition, which is like the first 450 pages of the series, because this is a long fantasy series. So John Gwen taking that amount of time to set up stuff I don't mind and I think it's make I think it makes sense and I think it's gonna pay off later especially um, in terms of liking the character so this book structurally has like different pods of things going on and I've kind of already described those characters we have Veritas who is a very skillful combatant and he kind of gets wrapped up and just like it's very attached to this high prince individual and his character is an interesting one because I think you could say he's a good person. It also does show the slippery slope situation and also the power of an awesome individual in terms of someone who is politically savvy and very convincing, especially when they're very convincing to themselves that they're in fact doing the right thing. And I just appreciate that John Gwen included the steps of power um, because most bad people think they're doing the right thing. And I think conceptually that was a cool thing to include. And you kind of get that eerie sense right away. Obviously we have Corbain who you can tell right away too, he's going to be a very important person, but most of this book is just his childhood, his family, his friends, his sister, his life within his small town and community. He's practicing with the sword. He's making connections. He's finding and training his little wolf pup. Again, it's a simple sort of picture and I've always enjoyed his chapters because his character is just very endearing. But again, when everything inevitably is going to change throughout the rest of the series, we're always gonna have this picture of Corbain before, which I feel like is going to be important. And the same thing could be said with the politics of before, the warfare of before, because everything is also changing there. It has a very traditional sort of medieval setting, both in its politics, its kingdom structure, its keep structure, its community structure, the combat is very medieval. We have champions, we have horseback 
warfare, but it's not incredibly organized and it's more about like groups of people going out and fighting against one another. But you also see the beginnings of that changing almost immediately in Malice. Some of the warfare being transformed into more of like a Roman inspired setup and situation, which is kind of funny to think about because of the whole like men always thinking about the Roman Empire and there's a lot of influences of Roman uh, influence in this, not only in its military setup, but also in the empire building that's politically important behind the scenes. And just like the greed and lust to like expand into a giant entity and thing and being ahead of all of it, you know? John Gwen as a writer is really good at writing combat. It's always engaging. And I think his switching back and forth between the different combat types is also really cool. And I think very specific to his skill set because he knows so much about like weapons and all of that. And I feel like it really shines in this. But yeah, my main point at this point is like, I feel like I've really just read exposition. Um, and it's, but it's giving me a really good handle and sense about how this world works and who I should have certain feelings towards. I want more political insight. I feel like a lot of the politics are being kind of given to us little amounts, but I think he's doing that in this particular novel for like a shock value thing, um, because we really only ever know as much as the character we're reading from's perspective. And we can glean from various conversations and kind of paint a larger picture by putting all these perspectives together. But very few of our main characters that we're reading from are like wholly centered in making important political decisions. They're kind of hearing things or being told things and we as the reader are like, huh, what, where, why? Which is a cool use case and I like how it's working in this first book, but I definitely want characters later on who are more politically involved because I want more insight on how this world works functionally, but I think as a device used from an introductory point of view, I think it's cool. Because clearly there are some powerful people behind the scenes who have agendas across the board, who also have abilities and skill sets that are hidden to us are not only the reader, but to other characters we're reading from. So I like that sort of balance too. But yes, I have about, I have under 200 pages of this book left. I feel like it's going to be completely like end game explosion at this point out. So I really wanted to give an overview of like where I'm at with my feelings with this so far. It's been a good first book. I'm interested, I'm compelled, I'm curious to see where it's going. It has a lot of traditional trappings to it, um, which makes it a good read. I wouldn't say it's the fastest read I've ever had in my entire life, but I actually feel like the pacing is probably going to be a thing that is gonna to be to its benefit later on. But yeah, I'm liking this book quite a bit and I'm hoping it develops into something really big, you know? So we're gonna sit down now and read a chunk, a big chunk. And then I'm gonna make lunch, hang out with Matilda for a bit, and we will wrap this sucker up, you know? Okay, I have like 100 pages of this book left and I'm gonna leave it out 100 pages and I'm gonna take a little bit of a break because I feel like once I start reading those 100 pages, it's gonna be very hard to put down. Um, things, I feel like I've just had like anxiety throughout most of this book because like I'm watching these scenes which I'm liking and I'm like, I feel like John Gwen's gonna hurt me later. And I still feel that way. I still don't know how things are gonna like come together, but I just know it's gonna be. Bad. I do think John Gwen has done a good job making characters that don't feel one dimensional. Um, there are a few characters that feel a little mustache twirly or I would just like more insight into understanding what they're doing. And yes, some stuff definitely happens off stage for like character building. And again, I would say the writing style isn't like the most emotional or I feel so deeply connected, but it, it has this like classic fantasy storytelling quality to it that I am still hooked. There are some perspective characters that I'm kind of still trying to understand why we're reading from their points of view, but I'm sure that'll come maybe clear later on. Um, I think I feel this way, particularly with Castell's character. I'm like, 
he's interesting and if I haven't talked about him he's basically just a warrior who fights giants and he's like off doing that um and I'd probably find his perspectives to be the least interesting someone who I do really like is Camlin and I want more Camlin and I also want more Swen Siwen Swen who is Corbain's sister I think these are my two favorite side characters. I find them to be really, really interesting. And uh, they're featured probably some of the least in the book, but I always look forward to their chapters. And that's a one fun thing about a multi fob fantasy story is you have, you run it, you're reading from so many characters and you really don't know when you're gonna run into them next. And when characters cross paths, it's always fun and satisfying. So you're like, ooh, what's gonna happen? I've been reading all these different disparate, you know, plot lines and now they're kind of converging to one end, probably chaos. Um, but yeah, anyway. I have 100 pages left, <laughs> I'm stressed, <laughs> and uh, we will read that. <laughs> We're making some egg salad sandwiches today, which are my favorite things, but especially when I have a lot of eggs, so that's what we're making. Also, I got these fall flowers from the grocery store, which I think are beautiful. And they will maybe be a good pick me up after I have a feeling John Gwen ruins my life. So, cheers to that. You know what I mean? Japanese egg salad sandwich complete. I also added pickled jalapenos and made a mess. Can't wait to eat it. <laughs> Let's finish this stupid book. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna hurt my feelings. I am not. I'm not okay. I finished this stupid book, and it was so stressful at the end. It really was like simmer, 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 boil, boil, boil. It was good. I like how it ended. I liked how it ended a lot. It got to the point where I was like, whoa, 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 like flipping the pages so fast. I'm almost a little annoyed because I was just making my way through. I had ideas of what I wanted to read next. And the ending of this was so explosive. I'm like, so like, I'm like, ugh, I need to know what happens next, John Wen. John! <laughs> and that's definitely how I feel. But I can't read the second one right now. Like, I, got, I gotta do some other stuff first. And I have so many questions. Dang, man. And I hope we get some more answers in the next one. Like, I feel like not having a lot of politically oriented characters worked well in this one, but I want a few more. I feel like the only political perspective we really got was Evnis, who was the advisor to uh, King Brennan, who has, you know, his morally gray uh, perspectives, which again, we're introduced to right at the beginning of the book. He's kind of a player we're familiar to be wary of almost immediately. And I would just like a little more insight on some other characters that we have seen and been introduced to because I am so curious about them. Uh, dang, this was, that was intense. That was so intense. Hooked me, it hooked me. I had a feeling it would. And it did. Okay, well, I feel like we're at the point where we need to just wrap up the old vlog. I have read over a thousand pages this week, which I'm quite frankly, pretty impressed with. <laughs> That's a lot of pages, you know what I mean? So obviously the first book I read was on my Kindle and it was White Hot by Alana Andrews. This was the second book to the Hidden Legacy series, which is a really fun, fast paced, romance forward, like detective style urban fantasy series, but with an actually compelling plot that's interesting. And the evolution of the powers, the introduction to the different types of power and magic within this magical society was cool. Obviously I read it in like 24 hours. It really hooked me. And I liked the second one even more than the first one. I just like the voice of Nevada. I don't find her annoying at all, which I feel like is, can be a rarity in romanticy style series. I just think she's a really cool main character and I'm just so excited to read the third and final book following her perspective and then other books by this author because I just find them to be so entertaining. And then Malice, I read all of this as well. Not bad. Obviously I've just gone in length about this novel, but I feel like as a first book and setup book to what is a long fantasy series, it did a really good job. Really good job setting the board, painting the picture of how this world works, who and what characters are at least important at this standpoint, and kind of gearing us up for what I imagine is gonna be a ridiculous ride for the rest of the books in the series. Definitely full of lots of tension, lots of likable characters, lots of complex and dynamic characters who have complicated moral choices to make. It's not so straight evil, even though it is like a classic clash of good versus evil in like a traditional fantasy setting. Um, but I found it to be compelling. I found it to be engaging. 
really and I also feel like the classic nature of the story like really drew me in and made me feel comforted by it even though the story is not comforting at all it is stressful um but yeah honestly I'm happy with this over a thousand pages two books read not bad for this start of this vlog I'm also happy I finally started one of the most popular fantasy series out there so you know a win is a win a win is a win but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon with another one soon goodbye